Hello everyone, Mike Aben here with some more KSP math. Let's talk Delta V maps, not how to use them. If you're unfamiliar with these things, I have a video on that topic. No, what I want to talk about is where do these numbers come from, specifically the transfer and capture costs, and how can we go about calculating them ourselves. Not only will this give us a better feel for orbital mechanics and allow us to calculate costs for other parking and capture orbits beyond those listed on the maps, we might just find along the way that these numbers are not as carved in stone as these maps may leave us to believe. So, without any further delay, let's do the math. There's a lot to cover here, so I'm going to be breaking this into three separate videos. Today we're going to stick with the Kerbin system, specifically getting to the moon. This will give us a chance to get used to the techniques and formulas we'll be using before we go interplanetary, starting with Duna, and then in part three we'll finish off by taking on the sometimes shockingly expensive MOHO. Let's get started by introducing the formulas we'll be using. All of these were first introduced in my This Viva video, so if you want to know where they come from or more on how to use them, that's the place to look. First, we have our two Vis Viva equations that are, quite frankly, a staple of this series. Second is another familiar formula that calculates the orbital velocity of a circular orbit. And third is this lovely little beastie which relates the altitudes and velocities of any two points in any trajectory when solely under the influence of gravity, whether it's in orbit or not. With that, let's tackle the moon. We'll start by taking a look at the numbers provided on this Delta V map, which you can find at the KSP Wiki, link in the description. According to this, the transfer from an 80 km orbit about Kerbin to the Moon should cost about 860 meters per second. It should then cost a further 280 meters per second to get our capture into a 14 km orbit about the Moon. Now let's do this ourselves and see how we compare. First, our transfer out to the moon is a straight up Hohmann transfer, the very thing the Visviva equations were built for. Remember that the first equations calculates the delta V of the burn at the lower of the two altitudes, uh, the R1. This is what we need to calculate our moon or injection. It is important to remember that R1 and R2 are measured from Kerbin's center, not Kerbin's surface. For example, our starting altitude is 80 kilometers above Kerbin's surface. Since Kerbin has a radius of 600 kilometers, this gives an R1 of 680 kilometers. Secondly, all the formulas we'll be using require distances to be in meters, so the number we'll be putting into our formula is 680,000. R2 is just the radius of the moon's orbit, 12 million meters, and the A is the semi-major axis, which is simply the average of the two orbital radii. That is, you just add the two R's and divide by two to get 6,340,000 meters. Finally, the funky U-looking thing is the Greek letter mu, which represents the standard gravitational parameter for the parent body, in this case, Kerbin. For Kerbin, here's the number right here. By the way, in game, the mu is denoted with a GM. Also, all of these numbers are available in game in the tracking station, but if you're having any trouble finding any of them, don't forget that these numbers and more are handily available at the KSP Wiki. Again, link in the description. Anyway, we put all these numbers into our formula, pull out a calculator, and find that our transfer to the moon should cost 856.36, or rounded to 856 meters per second. Comparing, we see that the map gives us 860 meters per second, but that is because all of their values are rounded up to the nearest 10. So far, so good. What about this 280 meter per second capture cost? The second Visviva equation gives us a delta V cost of the burn at the higher altitude. We don't perform a burn here, but maybe the number still means something. Sticking in all the same numbers into the second formula and pushing through our calculator gets 364.83 meters per second, not the 280 from the map. Okay, it's not yet what we want, but this is still a very useful number. We just need to really think about what it is telling us. If we ignore the moon for a moment, this number gives us the delta V of the burn that would be required to insert us into an orbit identical to the moon's orbit about Kerbin. 
Said in another way, this is the velocity we would need to add to our vessel in order to get up to the velocity we would need to be an object in the moon's orbit. But wait a sec, the moon is clearly an object in the moon's orbit. This means that at apoapsis, the difference between our velocity and the moon's velocity is 364.83 meters per second. I mean, it's called delta V for a reason. In other words, we would be encountering the moon's sphere of influence at a velocity of 364.83 meters per second. It's time to switch our point of reference to the moon. We now know the speed at which we are entering the moon's SOI. Next, we need the speed we would be traveling when we are at our closest approach of 14 kilometers above the moon's surface. For that, we need this formula. Once again, the r's are distances from the moon's center, and since we are in the moon's SOI, the gravitational parameter needs to change to that for the moon. It actually doesn't matter which altitude is r1 or r2, but for the sake of consistency with the vis-viva equations, I'm going to make r1 the lower altitude of 214,000 meters, and r2 the higher altitude, which is just the sphere of influence of the moon, 2,492,559 meters. V2 is the velocity at R2, which is our encounter speed we just calculated of 364.83 meters per second. What we need is V1. I'll start by rearranging the formula bit for V1. Once again, we substitute in the numbers and get out a calculator to get 829.47 meters per second for our velocity at closest approach. We're almost there. We would like to end up in a circular orbit with an altitude of 14 kilometers. The velocity we would need for this is calculated using this formula. Sticking in the numbers, we get that we need an orbital velocity of 551.71 meters per second. So clearly we're going too fast. But all we have to do is calculate the difference between these two velocities to get how much speed we need to knock off. This gets us 277.76 or 278 meters per second. This is the delta V cost of our lunar capture, again confirming the 280 meters per second from the delta V map. And that's it. But now it's time for you to test yourself. One of the great things about knowing how to do this is that you can now calculate the cost of capturing at different altitudes. For example, let's say you have a contract asking you to insert a probe into a circular lunar orbit with an altitude of 1200 kilometers. How much would this cost? Well, now you can do it for yourself. Let's summarize the steps we followed previously. Number one, use the first VisViva equation to calculate the ejection costs. Number two, use the second VisViva equation to calculate the encounter speed. Now note, both of these numbers are going to be the same as what we've already calculated, namely 856 meters per second and 365 meters per second respectively. Number three, use this formula to calculate your speed at closest approach to the moon. This will now be a different number than before. Number four, use the circular orbital velocity formula to calculate the velocity you need for a capture, and finally subtract the numbers from steps three and four to get your capture cost. And just as a check, you should find that the capture will cost 200 meters per second instead of the previous 278. Quite a bit cheaper. Oh, isn't that interesting? If you run into problems, don't hesitate to leave a comment below or drop by the Discord for a more in-depth discussion. Link in the description. Next time we're going interplanetary, where we'll find that the numbers on the Delta V maps may not be as rock steady as we might think. Until then, I thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.